Welcome back to the episode to Rise of Slides Golf Trail Podcast, uh, episode 37. I kind of lost my way there a little bit. I'm not going to lie. Dude, you you sounded like you were high. Uh, I'm, no, um, but it's just before we started, I said to Chenji, like, L- listen, Chenji, I have, <laughs> <laughs> I have three topics to talk about today. Uh, Woburn, playing at Woburn, a, a golf lesson I had, and one more thing. I was like, Chenji, man, you need to fill in some time because I have nothing. <laughs> so, Chenji, man, <laughs> I'm really counting on you to carry this home, mate. <laughs> mate, mate, I mean, to be fair, we can probably talk about for ages about your experience at Woburn, mate. That's we can like talk such a big thing. We can talk about... Anyway, uh, you know, welcome, welcome to Rice and Slice. Yeah. Welcome back. Please like know. and subscribe if you're watching. Please subscribe. We're... we're we're, we're um, you know, breaking some records. I think we have 41 subscribers. <laughs> Absolutely. We I'm, have, I'm, literally, we... I'm, I'm literally harassing everybody I know at work. I know, mate. I get to meet, you know, follow, like, and subscribe. I'm we're literally doing, looking at you. We're doing well on TikTok and Instagram. Like, we just, like, yeah. just needed YouTube to kind of catch up a little bit. So I, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. So, I don't uh, know. Do people still use YouTube like the young people? I don't know. Well, it's like old farts like you who still watch mate, YouTube. Mate, listen, videos. all all I watch is literally all I do is YouTube. All I watch, I, I even podcasts. Um, I like watching podcasts, which is very weird. I think I feel like well, I say that, but our, our podcast is literally on on YouTube. But uh, I enjoy watching uh, podcasts, and if I'm not watching and I'm driving, then I have YouTube Premium and I listen to the podcast playing on youtube so i don't really listen to to spotify but you know it, it is what it is um but i don't know man like tiktok is doing okay like uh you know rice and slice golf podcast i think it is go like it there mm. uh instagram is doing good same same handle just just you know just be just tag along man but yeah it's um it's been a uh, it's been a very very busy like 48 hours for me uh, we've re- we've released this episode, I think, like a day and a half late, because I said to Chenji, uh, normally we record the podcast on a Monday, and then I edit it on Tuesday, release it Wednesday morning. But on Tuesday, I had uh, I went to Woburn and I played the Duke's course, and I also had a um, a what how, how, like a like a, a short game clinic with the one and only Dan- Daniel Greaves. If you don't know who Daniel Greaves is, he is a short game expert. He is probably the number one short game coach in the UK. He's unbelievable. Um, and I was lucky enough to get a, um, to be booked in, me and Stel, to be booked in at, um, on, on one of his clinics. And it was the one. It was just such a great, great experience, which I want to get into later on in the podcast. And then after that clinic... Like, tell, we, tell, tell us how long ago you had to book to get, that lesson so I've, I think he's okay so i've years, been following dan ahead. for a long long time like, like same as me same as many golfers man's got over a hundred thousand followers 113 thousand followers dude and yeah. it's it's mad and you know what fair play well so so well deserved because i i met the guy obviously we got we got to chat i didn't tell him about the podcast i, I, I don't like doing that that's, that's like that's your job chenji that's i can't do that I can't be like, oh, I've got a podcast. You should subscribe. But Chenji's is like, I want to see you subscribe. Like, subscribe like, while I'm next to you. Otherwise, I'm going to walk l- off. I'm looking at your phone right yeah. now. You're clicking. Follow so, yeah, I got to talk know. to him. Um, I got to see firsthand the way he works, the, the way he teaches lessons. But what impressed me the most is probably what happened after we finished and I came home. But so we get into all of it. And then after the lesson, we last minute did a decision. We went and me and Stel played the Duke's course at Woburn, which is another experience in itself. So I was, you know, it, it was it was a very very long but successful day, and I can't wait to get into it. Um, I'm, do you want me to no? Uh, first of all, I want to talk about something else before we get into Woburn. Go on. I got invited to play at a golf society. But this is not like your regular golf society. Are you right, Chenji? <laughs> Chenji just left the camera. No. Oh, um, gosh. My recording stopped. Okay. It's all right. Just press record it's again. A, yeah. Are you, are you back on? Now. Yep. Shall we do three? Let, let's just do a quick three, two, one. Yeah. Do it. Three, two, two one. one. Ah! Okay. For everybody uh, watching or listening, well, for everybody listening, this is like what we do before we start the podcast to sync 
or the audio okay. under the camera. Well, now, now, so li- a little PTS you know for you. Do this. We, oh, we, we do like it. Or, oh or the, the, what's it called? The jig is up. <laughs> or the magic <laughs> is gone now. <laughs> you know what <laughs> The magic secrets. is gone. Exactly. This is, hey, look, there's nothing glamorous about syncing. My synchronization. <laughs> there's zero. There's nothing glamorous. <laughs> Listen, we're working with what we have and this is the way that we do it. So it's like, it is it's like, it it's like, it's like in a porn set, there's the fluffers, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, that's a myth, you know? That, they, that, <laughs> that apparently that doesn't exist. Uh, are we a porn podcast now? Well, we, we could be. Jesus, <laughs> I could, uh, mate, Jesus, I could follow pull it. out some. Follow. I could pull out some episodes. <laughs> <laughs> I could be talking That's about like... that for days. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back oh to golf. <laughs> back to, look oh how passionate you just became. Oh it's my god, I got night. flustered. It's I think it... my face is all red. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it, mate. Oh, right. Anyway, brilliant. anyway, let, let, anyway, let, let's anyway. move on. Um, back to golf, Jesus, I don't know how to regroup. So I got invited to a golf s- society literally this morning. I woke up at like 7 a.m. and I had a message. It's like, hey, Theo, uh, it's Leo uh, from blah, blah, blah. We played golf like a year ago. Blah, blah. I was like, okay, hi, yo, how are you doing? He goes, I want to invite you to a golf society. And I'm like, uh, you know, I don't know. He was like, oh, and then he sent me a link. Dude, they have a website. Like who who has a website as a golf society, right? Probably Listen to a this. Big one. A big one. So there's, there's, it's like a Greek, a Greek golf society. So it's mainly Greeks and Cypriots that play in this golf society. And I'm not gonna lie no to way. you, I'm not gonna lie to you, Chenji. Uh, apart from me, my two cousins and my uncle, I don't actually know anybody else that's Greek or Cypriot that plays golf. And mm-hmm. for me to, to to have such a professional society, just blew my mind. First of all. They have a captain, they have a vice captain, they have like a chairman. It's like, it's almost like a golf club, but without the golf club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? I guess that's what society yeah. is, right? But there's like yeah, exactly. 40 to 45 players. By the way, you also got invited to go to play at, in this uh, in this society. Wait, how do they find us? Is it literally on TikTok or something? No, 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 no. So I know the guy that, obviously the, the guy that invited me, I know because I played golf with him before. He's very close friends with Stel, well, close. He knows Stel. Um, they grew up together, and um, and I and, and when he said, "Oh, you can invite you know your podcast friends as well," and I was like, "Oh, Stel obviously told, told Leo about my part about, about, about the podcast." But then when I asked Stel, he was like, "Oh no, I, I didn't tell him anything about the podcast." So I'm like, "Okay, cool. So you're invited to join the Greek society, St- um, Chenji, if you if you want to join." Only problem nice. is the only problem is it's they play on a Wednesday, right? So that's like not even the main thing, and I can't do Wednesdays. But the main yeah. thing is there's 40 to 45 uh, players that normally play uh, every Wednesday, by the way. And is it every Wednesday? No, it's once a month. It's, I think, every second Wednesday of the month or whatever it is, right? To play, uh, you have to pay like a £30 joining fee, which is normal. They have um, each golf course that, that they go to is is probably like 75 to £100 pounds per round. But that comes with food and everything. You have to, uh, at, at, you have when you turn up to the golf course... You have to be wearing a green master's jacket, which they give you a link to buy. So it's like 150 pounds to buy like a green jacket. So when you turn up, you have to wear this jacket and a tie and like wow. proper trousers and shoes. And then you have to go and change in the changing room, in the changing rooms of the golf club. After after the golf round, you have to go back and change. You can't eat if you're not wearing a jacket and a tie, apparently. No way. Mate, it's so weird. Like, I don't know if I like it or not. Like, imagine turning up to, like, Mikolova, your local golf course, in a green jacket. I don't know. I don't like... Apparently, it's like... I feel... Go on. I mean, no. <sighs> it's a bit of a it's weird kind of... one, right? Because Leo was like, oh, my a... God, like, everybody, like, they, like, everybody that sees us, they love the green jacket. And I'm like, I don't know, man. It's a bit... I don't know. For me... I'd be like, look at those guys with the green jackets. But I kind of, I kind of like the like, the prestige. Look at those, of it. look at the, look at those wannabe masters champions. Yeah. So basically, it's funny that you say that because they have their own masters. Once a year, they go to like abroad somewhere, and uh, this time, this year, I don't even know. I think they're going somewhere in Portugal in June, and oh, they wow. have and they have a three day event. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and they have like a, there's like 45, 50 people go in. And it's like yeah. a golf holiday with like a massive competition. They have like really good prizes, like proper tro- golf trophies, and you know they have like dinner and uh, what, what like dinner and dance events and everything, man. And I'm like, this feels wow. very official. So any late any lady members 
or just a bunch of sausages? Just a bunch of sausages, mate. Uh, oh, oh yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll probably we be, love. I'm gonna probably be like the youngest sausage there. I'm not gonna lie to you. I mean, look, the way these corp societies work, they're mainly like people who are, you know, either retired, semi-retired, yeah. you know, own a business where they're basically retired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? Of so like they very can play flexible on a Wednesday. people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because, like, I mean, the way these corp societies work, because, you know, they just basically, you know, pl- uh, go to different clubs and play during the weekdays, because for the weekends, most decent clubs are reserved for members only. And even not so exclusive clubs now reserve their weekend tea times only for members now. So... Yeah, so they can really only do weekdays. Um, so for the working man like you and I, right? We're still working. Yeah, we're working hard, hardly working. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You know. I I, 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 I get I get it's, Tues- it's one of those things. I get Tuesdays off, and I always go and play golf with Stel. Uh, I could I, so and you, the missus gets Wednesdays off. If you can do a regular off. Tuesday, I think that could work. Oh, big time! But that like Stel has been invited to play in this society since last year, but because it's mm. a tu- it's a Wednesday and not a Tuesday, he can't do it. He can't swap his day off. I could potentially. But that means that I won't be playing golf with Stell on that one week of the month. And I'm like, it's not for me, it's not worth it. I'd rather play golf with Stell on, on a Tuesday rather than go and play so, with Golf Society. So big question then. Are you going to join? I don't think so, mate. I would love to join. Honestly, if Stell went, I would I would 100% join. And you know what? I've seen the schedule, mate. They're playing at some really nice golf courses. Really good go golf courses. Name name, Hollingwell. Name Hollingwell's one. Oh, That's the only one I run back. I, I, I googled... Mate, they play. They go to like Dorset and they go to Devon, and I'm like, for, for, I mean, I live in the Midlands. That's like a three hour drive, but they they yeah. handpick every single course. No wonder if it's expensive, obviously, to play there. But it's like yeah, legit, yeah. man. It's like proper, and it's not you like the Ooh. website. They like, uh, you know, they post other tea times and the scores and the results and the prizes and pictures, and I'm like, man, you know. It, it's quite cool. Like I've, I've, I don't have a single trophy to my name. Like I've played every single sport available to mankind. I went to a oh, sports yeah. college. You and your athlete stage, exactly. Yeah. Dude, I, I play. <laughs> I've growing up. I've played. I could name you twenty sports that I've played. Like I, that I took seriously. Not just like oh, I messed about basketball, football, now golf, cricket, uh, hockey. Uh, what else, uh, mate? I played netball in primary school. Dude, I played netball. I moved to the UK. I had no friends. It was like it was like uh, like towards the summer, right? And I had no friends. I couldn't speak a single word of English, no word of a lie. And in the school that I, that I was in, uh, it was like sports day, like two weeks after I started school. And uh, I, like I couldn't speak English, so I couldn't say I want to play football. So they just put me in a team to just to participate. Mate, they put me in a netball team. I was the only boy playing netball. <laughs> and I smashed it. I was so good at netball. And then after the sports day finished, I was like a regular in the netball team. And when we went to play different schools, this, I was like in year five or year six. And when I went to play, when we went to play different schools, like the, the gym teacher was like, why is there a boy in your team? And he goes, listen, he just moved over. He can't speak any English. Just, just let the boy play. He has nothing else to do. Like they felt sorry for me and just let me play netball. <laughs> How weird is that? How weird is that? <laughs> but yeah, like Theo, Theo, the netball player. Yeah, man. Like it. I'm, I'm pretty. Yeah, and like I don't have any trophies. All I, all I would want is just like it's just a trophy, man. And I feel like I mean, to be fair, look the, the the way your golf game is headed, and with your current handicap, which I think is still seventeen something, right? Yeah. Like you've you've got a genuine chance of winning. Well, a trophy, I don't know, I mean, mate. So. Uh, lately, my golf game hasn't been great. <laughs> Anyway, which we will get to, but yeah. actually speaking of like, you know, joining societies, right? I've I've had an interesting playing partner this weekend, this past weekend. Oh my God, so please tell me. I I played last uh, Sunday, yes. right? Basically like, you know, the weather was absolutely amazing in the UK and, you know, I didn't have anything planned and obviously playing on a Sunday is always difficult. I didn't just want to play on one of those like, you know, shitty courses or yeah. just a course that I've played before. I want to try something new. Um, so there I go, find someone, it's called actually, and found like a good James, it's actually Harry, Harry Cole and James Braid course, right? It's a very challenging, apparently like a very good track. It's Mm. called Denham Golf Club. Um, and, uh, you know, it's had like a reciprocal with like the James Braid Association. So it actually like, you know, had a reduced rate as well. Good, decent tea time. So drive, you know, just, uh, just about an hour to get there. Right. Great course. Looks great. Private grounds. Um, you know, and then basically 
played the front nine by myself, had some good holes, had some bad holes, nothing out of the ordinary, decent track, right? And then as I arrived on the ninth tee, there was a bunch of people there. So it was like they, it was one of those clubs that didn't have a tee sheet, right? So it was just kind of like a roll up. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So you, you, you just I'm turn up, you. right? So yeah, so I'm here I'm thinking, okay, so what's the process now? Like I'm on, I'm on the 10th tee and there's like literally like a gazillion people there. So I'm like, do I tell people that, I mean, should I finish my round? Do I wait for them? Well, it I'm should kind be. Of rushing for time. So, but anyway. Are they starting so, on the like, 10th? There, and by now, it's literally 4.30 p.m. It's like 4.30 p.m. Uh, sorry, 4 p.m., right? And I'm thinking, what? why are there so many people all of a sudden starting at 4 p.m.? So I was on the tee box. I just want to be polite. I was kind of rushing for time, but I wasn't, you know, rushing for... Wait, wait, really, wait. Really so at this point, time. were you by yourself? I was by myself, okay, yeah. Okay, I was okay, just okay, playing okay. a game. Yeah. So, you know, then I started chatting to one of the guys, and as people were teeing off, and just like, okay, so, you know, wh- what is this? Um, you know these members events. It's like a competition going on. And it's like, oh, we are you know part of the we are part of the uh, denim artesian club. Okay. We are the artesian members. What what's an Arte- what does that mean? Exactly, that was my reaction. Uh, but I was like, I didn't want to be one of those guys who were like, oh, I didn't know what it is. Yeah. I I, I pretty much. I mean, I mean, I'm like, yeah. I can, I'll ask you to subscribe, like and subscribe to the video and podcast. But I I will, I will never ask what it actually what something means if okay. I don't know it. So anyway, so like, I didn't. I don't ask what it is. I'm just like, okay, okay, cool. I, cool. I can see you um, like sneakily googling <laughs> what is artesian. <laughs> And I didn't even Google because I was just playing golf, right? So, but I was slowly asking him questions and all of that, and then <laughs> ultimately <laughs> investigating. <laughs> I was just investigating no. about this membership. What is this Artesian membership? Okay. And then basically afterwards, and you know, have a guess what it is an Artesian membership. I genuinely have no idea. I've never heard of this before. Okay. Can, go, now, go on. I can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> what is this? this is this is fascinating. This is definitely some proper like British as well. I don't even think these things exist anywhere else in the world, right? Okay. So um, I'm going to give you like a dictionary exam- uh, example. Okay. Right? I'm going to read this out loud now. <clears throat> An artesian, a class of membership of a golf club with restricted rights at a low cost. Historically, many British golf clubs had small artesian sections drawn from the working class. Typical... Uh, typically, Artesian members had limited playing rights, could not enter the clubhouse, <laughs> had no vote on the management of the club, played in separate competitions from the main membership, and had to perform unpaid maintenance of the course. Oh my god. Often, often an Artesian club was a separate organization that had negotiated use of a course with a private members' club, and some Artesian organizations have survived to this day. Now, <laughs> so basically, that means peasant membership. Literally, it's a peasant. Oh membership. my god! But There's no, and like, they, they use such a fancy word for it to make it not sound a, as bad. No, but this is how funny it was. So basically, I didn't know at this point what an Artesian club is, right? Wow. So I was asking for them. So like they were saying, "Oh yeah, we've got a separate clubhouse." What? Wait, uh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. So they cannot enter the clubhouse. What? Right. The, yeah, 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 yeah. They're not allowed to go oh. to the club. They're, and they've they got like, a allowed. little hut that they just uh, use. Was, they've literally got a little hut. And he showed me after the round, after we finished playing the 18th, right? Like, you know, oh, yeah, it's right around the corner. It's just over there. So we walk a little bit. And there's like a little hut, which is their own clubhouse. Wait, so, and they're not allowed to tee off until like 4 p.m.? And they're so put- they're only, so they're allowed at tea time before like 7.30 or something super silly morning hours, silly wee hours in the morning. No. Or only after 4 p.m. Dude, right. and, and you and you know, and you're only allowed to play nine holes. <laughs> you you can and you know you, you well you can play eighteen. Oh quick my enough. god! So basically, what he was saying is, you know, you find that artesian golf are very quick because they get limited daylight. So they're right? fast players. So these guys, they're all like very very fast players. I right? can't. They may not that's have the so biggest cool. handicap. I know, I know. So like, I'm just as they say, and he was saying, oh yeah, we can go to the main clubhouse twice a year doing like the mis- doing like the competition. I like wouldn't want to go. You know, like main no members mate, forget the them. And they say they take care. So they do unpaid work, right? So literally they just, you know, they help around maintaining the course. They help, you know, with everything from the... Oh, they do the bunkers. He was mentioning about the bunkers. So obviously I give him the whole spiel about, you know, my mate Theo, my podcast partner Theo, having volunteered at the JCB uh, Championship. You should see him uh, break a bunker. Oh, and you then, love him. <laughs> you should see him make a bunker. <laughs> and he was like, yeah. So they wake up in, early in the morning, mm, rake no. the bunkers for free, and in return get to play the course for a very okay. cheap price. Wait, 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 now, wait. Do you know the price? Yeah. 
I had I didn't ask for no, the prize. No, Chenji. Mean, I, I know, I know. How can you not get the prize? This is this is great. Like, this is material that we could use. I know. I know. How much was your no. round? Uh, it was sixty pounds. Does sixty five pounds? So do, do you reckon they will play for like a ten amp? I think they pay something like two hundred pounds a year to play the golf. Right, and in re- and also you have to rake the bunkers every morning before you go. And to you work. have to you have to rake the bunkers. I mean, obviously they, no. they, have, like, they have like a staff rotor, right? Now wow. I did some slightly more research, right? Now, as you know, one of my favorite clubs, right, is Walton Heath. Yes, yes. Walton Heath has an artesian section. <laughs> oh my! Okay, go on, please. Now. Tell me yeah, here's the, here's a here's here's what they say on the website, so you can actually you know find this online, right? Now, for those of you who don't know, Walton Heath, I mean, obviously, very well known course in the UK throughout the world. They're about to host the uh, Women's British Open um, yeah. come summertime this August, right? Uh, a friend of mine, Jin, he's a member there. Where we played the course a few times, so absolutely amazing club. It's one of the most royal clubs, actually. There was it's the only club where the there was a member of the royal family who was a former captain of a golf club. Right, that's a fun fact. Yeah. Anyway, so how to join the Walton Heath Artisans Golf Club? Walton Heath Artisans is a local village golf club for residents living within a three mile radius. So you have to be local, right? Okay. And that usually is like a requirement for like an artisan yeah, membership. Makes sense. If you're if you're over eighteen and interested in applying to become a member, your application must be proposed and seconded by two existing Walton Heath Artisan members before it can be considered by the committee. Fine, just like a normal golf club. Now, this is where it gets interesting, right? As a pros- as a prospective member, your application will hinge on your dedication to the club. So if you are not a regular visitor, it is highly unlikely that your application will succeed. So, like, you have to play golf all the time. Otherwise, you will not get in, which is kind of funny, right? If you think about it, most golf clubs want you to not play. Yeah. Because, you can- yeah. Or, like, maybe they do want you to play. I don't know. Anyway. You should come along with an introducing member, but if you do not know an existing member, you're still welcome to come and show your face and make some new acquaintances. The clubhouse bar, which is separate from the actual clubhouse, um, is open every Thursday evening from 7.30 p.m. onwards. Um, Walton Heath Artisans is a friendly club of loyal, sociable members. We are part of our history relationship with the main club and are privileged to have access to two fabulous golf courses seven days a week at a vastly reduced rate. In return for regular course maintenance duties. There we go. That's crazy. <laughs> so you just basically like you're a volunteer to clean well, uh, and and uh, clean and maintain the golf course, and in return you get um you get to play get there for us. Restricted. We get That's restricted crazy. tea time. That's so weird, the, man. That's like during all the days. It's 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 a club within a club. It's like you were saying, right? With the golf societies, it's like a golf club but not associated with a golf course um yeah but with these artisans it's like a proper actual golf club within a golf club but a separate membership i like, would not be surprised cheap. if there's a saint andrews artesian club I they could be and i think you know maybe we should do some more research and see like you know what are some of these artesian you know, i've never heard of this i've never after heard of you this ex- so, after you know, you've you explained learned, you learned it something yeah. i'm not surprised like it makes sense like all of these prestigious, like really nice top 100 golf courses. Why wouldn't you do this in a way? Yeah. Like have some people working for free. Not, not, they're not going to be putting 40 hour shifts a week, but I don't know, go around, rake some bunkers. I don't know, whatever. Uh, change the bins, put water in the budget, the pool cleaners. I don't know. And yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? And somebody has to do the job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rather than pay somebody to do that, when you can pay somebody to do like a bigger job, like cut the grass, you know, you know, uh, you know, roll the greens or whatever, you can have like a somebody and go, to, okay, in return, you can play for a tenner. I don't, I don't know, so, I don't know. I don't think I mind so, that. So, so there we go. But I just what I found very weird was like, you know, how can you not allow these guys access to the bloody big clubhouse? <laughs> See, that's pretty I, weird. I'm not going to lie. That is weird. That is weird. Is pretty, but what I bet they love, like the Artesian members love the summer then. Because if it gets dark at 10 o'clock at night, they're like, oh, we can take our time today. Exactly. Ooh, exactly. In the, so, in the winter, they're not playing. Exactly. Oh, my and God. So, that's so and their competitions man. are all their own competitions. So they don't participate in the main club's competitions. They have their own I'm not competition. surprised with that as well. Wow. Yeah. 
Mate, I, 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 I would have been asking their own everything. I would have been yeah. I, I would have been asking so many questions to this guy that you. So what? You just joined in with with one of the old boys and just played. So I just I just joined with one of those guys. I mean, he wasn't old. He was like you know fifty or something. I think you know still working and all that. So yeah, um, that's quite interesting. Yeah. Good good job. That was very interesting. Yeah. I would not be. So I wouldn't. Go on. Something new. Something very new. Every day's every every day's a school day, right? Yeah. So, um, that's very interesting. Uh, I wouldn't anyway. be surprised if like Woburn has this because it's such a massive club. Um, I won't be surprised if most golf clubs have this, but you would just never hear of it because obviously it's like you know, it's it, it's like how how airlines, you know, they always have unsold tickets, but or like you know, let's just say you go to a, like a Broadway show, a West End show, they always have tickets, but they always sell it at like a really cheap price, but they don't want the public to know about it because they don't want the public to know that there is an option like this available, so everybody just joins the cheaper option without paying the full fat. Yeah, right. So. You know, they try to hide it as much as they can. Wow. And it's mainly like a thing w- that works, you know, that spread uh, word to mouth. Um, and But now you know, if you follow um, the Rice and Slice Golf Podcast, now you know. We teach you so many things, guys. Golf like, you, membership you is. You can't so. complain. <laughs> right, moving so, yeah, on. You know, no, but, you know, uh, you know, if you guys know of any Artesian clubs out, th- you know, uh, Artesian memberships out there, if you are part of an Artesian uh, golf club, right, you know, let us know. Yeah, you know, it's so like comments. I would we would it's, love to talk to you and like love to and talk get to more you. information because it's fasc- it's, 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 it's I, I fascinating. It really is. I've never heard of anything I feel like, like this. Yeah, I feel like some you know some of these artesian clubs will pay like a very cheap you know annual fee to play the course at a reduced rate at like you know at, at certain restricted uh, tee times. Others, you know, it sounds like you know again as long as you do all the work, part of the artesian club, you just basically get to play around for a vastly reduced price, right? You know, per round, but you still have to pay per round. So there might be different arrangements. So we'd love to learn more about how these things work. So um, anyway, moving on. Theo, over to you. Oh. The big, 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 big trip. The trip of your lifetime. Well, I wouldn't Robert, say trip of my life. lifetime. Trip of my lifetime would be going <laughs> to the Masters, mate. <laughs> but um, So um, last year, I, I, I follow the gentleman called Daniel Greaves. If you don't know who Daniel Greaves is, he is one of the top, not only short game coaches, but all round coaches in the UK. But his main focus, I would say, is his short game lessons are like so hard to get i had to book this like six months in advance so it's actually funny i will tell you something else today so i'll give you an example of how difficult it is right i went this morning to check if he had any availability for a one hour lesson and his next available date is the 13th of october that's how busy this guy is right he's fully booked he's fully booked every single day I think he does two clinics, two short game clinics a week, Tuesday and a Friday. Uh, on the other days, um, he what does one to one lessons. Uh, he does like he he can teach people like me, like high handicappers. He works a lot with pros. He um he he does not only short game. He'll do like you know he'll go he'll he'll do on course lessons. He'll you know everything whatever you need. He's also the head pro at Woburn. He also has a um, a best selling book. A short game book that's like uh, number one on Amazon. He's uh, he's got an app. Like I could go on about this guy. He's the real deal. There's there's, there's no gimmick about this guy. And I was lucky enough to be to book in on um, on one of his short game clinics. So the day rolled up. That was yesterday. Yes, yesterday. Uh, I had to wake up at six in the morning. Went round Stell's house. We went together. Uh, the the clinic started at half nine. Um. He's got like a souped out little ca- uh, little buggy as well, and because I had my carry bag, my uh, my like my staff bag, he goes to me, mm. oh, why, why don't you jump in with with me and we can go down to the to the short game area? And I was like, yeah, well, like I, that's all. I was like, yes, yes, let's go together. So we sat next to each other. We were talking about Bulgaria. Uh, he asked me what I did for a living. You know, we talked about golf, and it was like a very slow five minute drive because we were driving and everybody else was like walking behind us. Mm. So, um, but yeah, we kind of got to chat for a bit. He was lovely, bless him. Um, and then the kind of lesson starts from half nine till half two in the afternoon. And we had like literally like a 10 minute break to have a quick snack. And then we went back back onto it. Dude, those those hours flew by. Uh, I, how many pe- how many people were there? There was 10 of us all in total. Uh, yeah. I, you go into these clinics. It's the first time I've done like a 10 man, I don't know, like lesson. You always worry, like, how much time is he going to spend with you? 
Is he going to spend enough time? He spent the perfect amount of time with with all of us. Uh, he, um, he, he, whoever was struggling a bit more to understand something, he would spend a bit more time with them. Fair enough. Obviously, uh, if you were kind of doing it like he said he would do it, and you and, and you kind of picked it up quickly, he would kind of move on to the next person. Fair enough. If you had any questions, you could kind of just shout at him. He'll come back. He'll explain a few things. He had two young uh, junior pros or whatever you call them from Woburn that were kind of helping him out. Um, it was, it was, there was so much information throughout the whole like um, five hours. I was thinking, to, I was t t saying to Stel, I was like, I'm not going to remember all this. I'm not going to remember all this. I tried to get my phone out and like take notes. And I was like, I couldn't keep up. And I was like, dude, man, like he showed us like, uh, we, we went into bunkers. The, the, the last bit, he, sh he showed us how to do bunker shots. He showed us how to do like, how to like check and stop. He showed us how like different lies, uh, a muddy lie, how to play like a, a muddy lie, but not like long get long game. Forget long game. It was just literally twenty yards in in and in. That's all it was. It was just like green side, uh, short game. And you know, I was like, yes, perfect. So he showed us like the perfect lie. Showed us like downhill lies, uphill, side hill, whatever, uh, in the rough. Um, you know, just different. Every single like b uh, backhanded. Shots like every single shot that you would ever need in your arsenal for 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 like twenty yards and in, he taught us that within like I don't like with such great detail that it was, I was like, dude, there's no wonder you have like a book written because it was just perfectly worded. You understood everything, uh, and then he was like, and then he would explain something. He would show it show it to us, and then we would break up e either into like pairs or like by ourselves around the massive massive green. And then we would practice and then we would go and then he would just go around and, ch and check. Um, the best part, what I enjoyed the most was probably the bunkers because I'm I'm half decent getting out of bunkers. But he taught us a couple like two things. One, which is actually quite interesting, how to get out of a, a tight bunker that doesn't have much sand. Mm -hmm. And obviously the opposite or how to get out of a bunker, but that's got loads of sand. And... Mm -hmm. um, I've basically played the same shot regardless of how much sand was is, is in the bunkers. Like, I would look at the same. lie, obviously, and then, you know, I'll be like, okay, so the lie is decent. It's not plugged. It's sitting up a little bit, but it was always open club face, you know, uh, wait on your left foot, uh, left foot, and then, like, low down and kind of, you know, swing at it. You know, don't be scared mm. to swing. Have, a, like, a big follow-through. But that's how you're supposed to play, like, a really fluffy, sandy bunker mm -hmm. you're not supposed to do that with a like a with, with a bunker without without any sand in so you taught us yeah. that and I, I was actually surprising when he showed us like when he demonstrated how to hit a bunker shot without much sand in i was like dude like i was looking at stuff like i'm there's no way I'm, I'm gonna be able to do this i picked that up so quickly i was so confident in in hitting shots i was like oh that's actually pretty decent he's like once he did it once twice three times and then he would be next to you and you'd be like oh just try this try this and then you, you pick it up. You know what I'm like as well. It's the same with you. If it's something that, that we're interested in, we kind of pick it up very, very quickly. And, Absolutely. And it was the same with this. And uh, another thing that I really enjoyed, because we're not, well, I'm not fortunate enough to play incredible courses like Woburn or JCB every single week. Like whatever, a one-off, yes, we go and play nice courses. But mainly we are playing like my local, you know, membership course, you no know, problem. But the grass is nowhere near as nice and like as nice as all these top clubs, right? That you know, you I find that I get more muddy lies, shall we say, especially this time of year, than fluffy, nice sitting up lies. So I was mm -hmm. like, okay, so how do I play a, like a shot like this? Mm -hmm. So um sorry dude. So yeah. So he kind of taught us that and I and you know it was it was it was a very So what do you do? You do you hit down on it? Um yes you do hit down on it. Uh, weight on the left foot, you kind of hit down on it. Uh, depending on the lie, you might want to open the club face a little bit. Again, it's it's the tiny little details that make the biggest the, like the biggest difference, right? And and he was yeah. teaching us all these things, and I'm like, there's no way I'm going to remember all this. So I was trying my best to kind of memorize as much as I could, or especially memorize the things that I felt like I would use the most. And then we finish, and Stel was like, dude, like like, and then we finish, and when I'm played golf. And then on the first hole, Stel was like, dude, I forgot everything he said. And I was like, no, no, I, I, I remember like a couple of things. Like, like I'm good. Like, I, re I remember 
not the basics. I remember a bit more than the basics, but I'll give you an example, right? So this is going to sound so silly, but each, 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 before I tell you, each to their own, right? There's a million ways of playing golf, but there's like a couple of like ways of playing golf properly. So um, with me is I'll watch, uh, let's say a hundred videos on how to, uh, on how to get out of a bunker, for example. And then out of those hundred videos, I'll pick one, I'll, I'll, I'll pick up on one little tip from those hundred videos and that would work for me. So I will just carry on using that. There's no why, why change, right? Even though it might, it might work seven times out of 10, like, well, at least it works seven times out of 10, you know? So what I did once I accidentally watched a short game, uh, tutorial by, by Phil Mickelson. And he basically, it was like a tiny, it was like a five minute video on YouTube. And if you haven't seen it, I would definitely recommend going and see it. Cause it does, it, it's, he does help you. And he was saying, okay, have your feet like this. Make sure whatever you do, either have the ball. If, if it, this is just for short game, either have the ball on the uh, uh, front, uh, front foot or back foot. Front foot if you want the ball to go high, back foot if you want the ball to go low. Or whatever you do, always have the weight on your left shoulder. 70% of the weight on the, and I'm like, okay. So those three things I've been, fundamentals I've been doing religiously ever like for, for 100 yards and in or 75 yards and in. Uh, and my stance was actually quite like a, not as much as like an iron shot, not as wide, but a little bit small, a little bit shorter. Uh, going to Dan Greaves, dude, his stance, and this is normal. Like I've seen pros do this, but I've never been able to do this. The um, your feet are basically like touching with one another, uh, one another, so you don't have any rotation in your hips. You only move your, your top half of your body, and that can generate like like that means you have more feel, more control, and you can control the ball a lot more. Mm. So I was like, so I was trying that around Woburn, and it, it worked a treat, no problems. And uh, we finished the, the golf at Woburn. I'm, I'll get into that later on after this little segment. I get home. Uh, as soon as I get home, I get an email from Dan. Hey, Theo, hope you're well. Really enjoyed meeting you today. Obviously, he sent this to everybody in the class. Um, really enjoyed uh, working with you today. Hope you've, you've picked up a few things. Uh, here's a link to our, my app. Uh, you have a three-month free trial. And I was like, oh, wicked, cool. So I download the app on the, on the app store. By the way... You can download this app. You pay £99 annually. And it's got basically what he taught us is in uh, sections. It's like a very, very well done app where short game. Okay. Uh, tough lies. And then you click on tough lies. And then there's like a five little videos, 30 seconds to a minute each. Very fast paced, very quick, straight to the point videos of Dan explaining, you know, this, whatever he taught us. And then it's like, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Normally you pay like a hundred pound for the year. He he gave. I'm guessing he's giving everybody like either one or three months for free. So if you want like a refresher, you go on the app and you go. Oh, I forgot what you said. You go there, you find a certain shot that you want to work on, and you just kind of watch the video and you. Oh, okay, that's what he was talking about. And then you kind of refresh yourself. I was like, oh, wicked. Okay, that's pretty cool. So that was really really good. Um, overall, great 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 lesson. Uh, he gave everybody the time of day. Dude, there was this uh, one shot, right, that we everybody sees on the PGA Tour, and we only wish that we could do it. It's Which the, is? The check and stop. Oh, I it's love the, that It's shot. the sexiest shot in golf, in my opinion. It's being... It's watching is golf. It around, is, it the, is it around the green? You hit down on it. Yeah. Low spinner, check and stop. Yeah. And it's like... One bounce, I've, two bounce, I've stop. I've never seen it... Obviously, like, you're like, oh, yeah, but I bet I could do this. But you, you can't, right? You, I'm telling you now, Chenji, you can't do this. I've done this once, unintentionally. By accident, yes, <laughs> yeah, same. By accident. But I mean, like... I have not, no idea how to actually yeah. do it. Like, so, <laughs> basically, um, the sexiest shot in golf. Like, you, you see, play, like, all the pros do this, and, and they hit it, and you're like, oh, my God, this is going to go 20 feet past the hole. And it checks once, and then it just stops dead. And you're like, oh, like how, man? Like, how do they do this? So he taught us how to do this. And I'm like, and. this is like, and seeing him do this so effortlessly, is that the word? Effort, effort. Yeah. Effortlessly. Yeah. It was like, dude, anybody can do this. Not only was he doing it, he was using like a dirty old like wedge 
Like not even brand new wedge or like, oh yeah, you, you, your wedges have to be brand new. You need to change your wedges every six months to be able to achieve this. He was using like a dirty old uh, tailor-made wedge, actually the same wedge that I have. And he was using like dirty, crappy range balls. And I'm like, what? I thought the ball had to be perfect. It was like the club had to be perfect. Very, the grooves have to be clean. He was just like, yeah. So what you need to do is you stand here, you do this, you kind of stab at it. Uh, you make sure you finish here and you feel like you're, you're hitting a draw, but you're not. And then you just, and then he, while he's like explaining this, he's playing the shot while he's talking, not even concentrating. Checks once, stops like literally within inches of the hole. And I'm like, dude. <laughs> but the, it's the, just silly. So uh, I don't, I need to practice this shot, obviously, but the conditions have, the only issue is the ball doesn't, it doesn't matter how clean it is or dirty it is. The club doesn't even matter by what I saw. It does Obviously, it helps if it's like a brand new wedge, but it doesn't really matter. The grass matters. The most important thing is the, is the lie. The lie has to be perfect for this to work. Mm. So the way he showed us, he was actually like on a practice mat. So he was hitting it off a practice mat. And then um, like there was because there was like half of us on, were on the practice mat practicing this. Dude, everybody, even like a, like a 60 year old man that was like just like your average golfer that wanted a couple of tips to, from Dan. He was like checking balls like every single shot after like one explanation. And I was like, dude, like that's so cool. And then obviously it was my turn. I think I did it like twice. I'm pretty sure I did it by accident. Like I was trying to do what he said, but I'm pretty sure I did it by accident. I need to practice that shot. I want to like master that shot. Imagine having that in your bag, man. And like taking that shot and then like somebody around you is like, oh, you hit that hard. And then you checks and stops and you just kind of walk towards the green. You take your glove off. You put the glove in your back pocket go to the bag, pick up the putter. And everyone's like, I don't know, man. Is that, I don't know what it is about that shot. That just, that just is so cool. So yeah. He, so sexy. Yeah, very. So um, yeah, I would definitely recommend Daniel Greaves. Uh, good luck trying to get a, an appointment. I mean, follow him on Instagram. Da, uh, at Daniel see Greaves, see you in October. <laughs> uh, but what he does is if somebody drops out, he'll like post it on his stories. So I would oh, 100, nice. if you need any help with your short game, I'm telling you, man, Daniel Greaves is your, is your guy. Anyway, moving on. After that five-hour lesson, we finished at half two. Last minute, we decided to book a tea time at Woburn. Now, me and you and Stel are going to play Woburn in June. And uh, we're playing the Duke's course and the Marquess course in June. And on, I decided last minute, the weather looks half decent. Why don't we play there? I invited Chenji. Chenji couldn't come because of work. Fair enough. I don't blame him. So um, me and Stell, we finished at half two, went, literally went straight to, to the car, got our little um, our car, our electric trolleys, uh, went and checked in. Oh, no, I wish I had it with me. I don't have it with me. Never mind. They gave us like a little welcome pack and I, I kept it in pristine condition to show you on the podcast. Good thing I brought it with me. So they, they gave us like a little welcome pack. You had a, it's like a little, it's like a little, pa uh, it was like, it's like one of these, like one of these, um, what do you call it? Like card holders, but not as it's not yeah. leather, it's paper. And inside you had two scorecards, a pencil, two like, you know, like when you go to like a golf club and, and you're like a member, they give you like a little tag to put on your bag. Oh yeah. So it was like two of them visitors passes for the Duke's nice. course, with, but beautiful, like printed with like yeah, gold yeah. Uh, rope around it that you can, and I'm like, I'm not putting this on my bag. I'm going to save it. I'm going to save it as a, as a, as a mem was, was memorabilia. It, was it in paper? Was it paper? It was like really high class. Like expensive play. paper, I don't even know. Wait, when I played card. in Celtic, Ma when I played in Celtic Manor, they printed out this whole bloody like luggage tag. Oh like, well, no, sorry, wait, see that's really cool. Tag. That's really cool. And it, and it's these touches that are really with cool. your name on it. Yeah, with your name yeah. on it as well. It's like it's JCB. Brilliant. Whenever you go play JCB, uh, you get a towel. You get a, like a, a towel with your name on it, which is very cool. Well, it's only the first time you play it though, right? Ah, so. oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn it! If you played it twice, we won't get another one. Oh, it's funny. It's funny you said that. Because uh, I'm going to, I'm a, as a greenkeeping volunteer that I went last year, they um, they gave me a towel with my name on it. I was like, this is so cool. So this year, when I when I joined again to be a greenkeeper volunteer, which by the way I'm going, um, yeah. I, I put my name as Theodorus Kalopidis, which which is my full name, right? I, hoping that they would give me another towel and it says Theodorus Kalopidis because the other one says Theo Kalopidis, and yeah. I don't know why I don't like the fact that it says Theo Kalopidis. And I'm like, I'm gonna put my full name, and I actually filled out today. You want to get the full ink? You gonna? Yeah, get the yeah, full yeah. Ink. And I'm like, I want my full name on this towel. I don't know why. 
And today I got sent uh, like a welcome pack and I had to uh, fill out some like health and safety forms. And then every form I put Theodorus Kalopidis, it was like 20, it was like 12 forms <laughs> hoping this is my name, print print this name on, on the towel. <laughs> I love anyway, it. I love it. I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So going into Woburn, um, as in into the car park, it's just your bog standard, normal, run of the mill car park. There's nothing special about it. You know, like, you know, like when you go to when you're driving to into um, dr- cl- driving club, into golf clubs, you normally see like mm-hmm. a couple of holes left or right of the of the course. You see yeah, nothing. Yeah. You don't see nothing. It's just trees. No way. Nothing, wow. dude. It's the weirdest golf club I've ever visited. So going in, you don't see no uh, go- uh, ho- um, ho- holes. You don't see nothing. It's just trees. And then there's a car park in front of you. It's just a normal, bog standard car park, nothing special, right? And then you see the clubhouse and there's nothing around you. Like it's just trees. So you're looking around and you're like, first of all, where's the, where's the first tee? And how is there three courses in this like location? It doesn't make any sense. So we go in the pro shop. Pro shop is quite nice. I, I stop myself from spending a lot of money, uh, but it's very easy to spend money there. Uh, we check in, we pay, whatever. And then they go, yeah, I go down here for the was juice he, course. Was Impulse's face everywhere? Mate, it was, everybody's face was everywhere. But they have one picture. As soon as you walk into the pro shop on your right-hand side, they have this massive picture of Ian Porter is kneeling down, reading a pot, wearing his, like, um, famous trousers. Mate, it's the, the quality of this picture. I know it sounds silly, right? But I, when you go, you're going to see, and, and you're going to be, like, just standing there. It, dude, it looks like an eight, 8K picture the quality wow. is too good it feels like ian porter is i think it's like a life-size ian porter uh, picture i don't know how i don't know how to, uh, else to explain it if you've yeah, been yeah, to open you, you you know which one i'm talking about I, I kept staring at it and i was like dude man like this picture is perfect anyway we, we but yeah I, ian porter's everywhere pretty much there's like a like a signed bag there's, there's like memorabilia everywhere there's trophies everywhere it's very cool um you go in, there's like a little hut where it's like a couple of uh, people that work there and they kind of explain to you where you need to go. We go on the first tee and again, you don't see a hole like left or right of you. And I'm and I'm like, where? how is there three courses here? So you play every hole and you look around. Yes, across the trees, like across the tree line, you can see another hole. But you, you I don't know how to explain it, man. Like you're in... Where you are, it feels like you're so secluded to that one golf hole that you can't imagine that there's like 35 other holes around here somewhere. It's you 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 feel like you're in the middle of nowhere and nothing else matters but the hole you're playing on. And then you finish, you walk a little bit, and then there's another hole and there's nothing else around you. It's just literally like let's say it's a it's a dog leg left, right, or a, whatever. It's just a tree line, perfect tree line, going straight down and then left. And then you see nothing else. You're either going to love this course, Chenji, or you're going to hate this course. Because I can genuinely say it's probably like one of the hardest, just because of the trees and you have zero room for error, it's probably like the hardest course I've ever had to play. We didn't play very well. We didn't play. I had a few very good holes. I, I, I birdied the second. I don't know how I birdied the second because my first shot, it was like in the rough a little bit on the left. And I had this massive tree. It was like 105 yards. I was, and I had this tree to get over. And I, I, I flushed my my uh, gap wedge. And as you saw in the little video on, on, the, on Instagram, it landed like a foot before the hole. And it just literally bounced over the hole and landed right next, right next to, the, to the hole. But um, in, the front, in the front nine, there's three par threes. And you're thinking, oh, this is going to be nice. Dude, you've never seen like such difficult par threes in your life. Very, very was difficult. It long, long. No, and then ve- they were raised. short. One, one was right. long. One was like two hundred and twenty yards. But no way. Yeah, but that, but the, the, they were short and they were very deceiving. Like did you, one. Did you play off the yellows or the whites? No, 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 no. <laughs> mate, mate. Oh, it's a big difference, by the way. Yellows and whites, very big difference. Like on each hole, there's probably like minimum twenty to thirty yards difference. No way. But the reds to the yellows wasn't that much of a difference. <laughs> Yellows right. to yellows to white, yeah, big, big, big difference. It was like a different golf course in, in itself. Wow. So it's like the, the fairways in some holes is qu- are quite big, but then you have like five yards of rough and then trees. Same on the left, same on the right. So you can't really miss hit shots 
you have to be very, very specific of where you hit your shots. Uh, on every single, um, we went to the, the, there's a halfway house on the 10th, I think it was. Yeah, on the 10th, going to the 11th. Um, we spoke to a lovely man called Nigel that was working there. We, we were speaking to him for like 20 minutes, half an hour. He was amazing. Uh, he was telling us there's a, there's a halfway house on each golf course at Woburn, which I don't know why it surprised me, but it would make more sense if you had one golf course. Uh, sorry, sorry. If you had one halfway house that kind of met in between somewhere of like all three golf courses. But these golf courses, I don't know where each one is, man. Because obviously the close to each other but they feel so far away because of the trees and like you don't see anything you don't see any other players around you you don't see nothing man it was very very it was a very weird cause the grass was perfect the fairways the rough the um, like the greens were fast and it's like look we're in april man and like imagine in june when we go the greens are going to be rapid the the tea boxes were in pristine condition it was such and i'm thinking why, how, this is probably very ignorant of me, and I'm going to find out when I go to JCB. Why does JCB and like Woburn, the two very nice golf courses that I've visited, why do they have such incredible grass? But then when you, like, an incredible fairways, an incredible rough. And it looks like normal grass. Like, it's not, it's not like Bermuda grass. It looks like normal British grass that grows into in parks. No, we can't. We can't have Bermuda grass in the UK because of the rain and the less, right. You know, and the, so and this the is like natural right. growing like grass, right? What we have, I think. Like Brent, I think it's called Brent, UK Brent. I'm not. I don't know. I, I don't know. Bent, bent grass. Yes. Right. So it's like, why can't we have nice grass like this? Like, f not fluffy, but grass everywhere. Like, just you know, you know. I don't know how to explain it. Like, it, th there's no div. Well, okay, there's difference. Obviously, if somebody's playing from that shot. But other than that, there's just grass. Like, you, 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 all you see is grass. You don't see mud. You don't see ground. It's just grass. Like, how difficult is that to replicate in, like, your normal golf courses that we play in? Why is it so Very. difficult? But why? But why? And I'm like, I, 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 need, I need to find out. But It's the maintenance. It's the maintenance, isn't it? I don't know. But it's like, why, though? Like, that's your job. I, again, I'm sorry. Like, this is probably very ignorant of me. But it's... I don't know, like the greenkeeper's job is to grow grass and look after it. So why can't we have fluffy, nice grass if it's possible? Because obviously it is, because we've seen it at Woburn and JCB. And obviously there are hundreds of other amazing golf courses in the UK. Why can't and a, a little above average, like even Kenniston, it's great fairways, but there's places where it's grass and then, then you can see like the ground and you have to proper like view the lie and kind of make sure before you take a shot. But with this, obviously with this grass at Woburn on JCB, you're not scared of hitting like chip shots or like even using a 60 degree wedge. So it's, but when you're playing at like my local Parkland course, mate, I'm never getting that 60 degree, degree wedge unless I'm out of a bunker. So it's just one of those things. I would love to know why, but that's my time, Woburn experience. Time, time, time for you to ask uh, Callum. <laughs> I will, I will, I will. I'll, I'll definitely get more information when I go to JCB in, I think it's in August. But yeah, my uh, overall, we were so tired, dude, when we were playing Woburn. Uh, dude, I, I can, it's a long course. How long is the how long is the Dukes? I think it's like six thousand seven hundred yards. That's uh, pretty it, up for the yellows as well. Yeah, it felt like twenty thousand yards yeah. because oh, we, we were standing for five hours. So I woke up at six. We, we, we were at Woburn for half for nine. We were standing from half nine to half two. Obviously, like there's no seats to sit down, and it's not like a lecture. We were playing hey, golf. How? How big of a stretch was it for us to record that podcast on the Tuesday night after you, that day that you've had? So I said, yeah, so I, I said to Chenji, let's not record a podcast on the Monday. Let's do it on the Tuesday night when I get back from Woburn because obviously I'm going to have loads of content to talk about, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, yeah, yeah, great, great, great. And then I, I came back at home on uh, on Tuesday at like 10 o'clock at night. And I was like, oh, on the way back, I said to Chenji, I don't know if we're going to do the podcast. I will message you when I get home. I completely forgot to message Chenji. I came <laughs> you just, home. You just passed out. I went home. I took a shower and just went straight to bed. I was, I was dead. Standing for five hours to having a lesson and then playing four hours of golf and then driving two and a half hours back. Oh my God, Chenji, man. It killed Mate, me. In retrospect, like the dream. you say that until you actually do it. In retrospect, I kind of wish we didn't play, we didn't play golf after that five hour lesson. 
now it makes you kind of think as well for these guys, you know, which was a tournament again, the 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 WGC match play. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. These guys were playing two rounds of golf every single day. Yeah, like I could do no problem three three rounds of golf a day with a buggy, no problem, no problem. But, but walking walk in the it, course, though. no, mate, it's so difficult, man. Very, very difficult. So fair play. You know what? This is like um charity thing that I see every year. They they do it. Yeah, the longest day. Yeah, longest it, day of the know, year. Seven, 72 bloody holes. You play holes. 72 oh holes. Stell's, Stell done it once a few years ago. I would actually love to try it and as a challenge. Are you up for it? Would, would you do it? I would do it. Do you reckon we, we can pull it off? Rice and slice. We should do it, actually. We'll look into that. Yeah. We'll speak after the Let's podcast. Rice, rice and slice um, cancer research fund. I'm down for that. We'll raise some money. Obviously, I don't think we're going to raise a lot of money, but whatever we raise, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll set up like a just, uh, what is it? A GoFundMe page, whatever you call it. And yeah. we'll try and raise a bit of money for a charity like prostate cancer or I don't know, something, whatever, right? Ab absolutely. We'll absolutely. do that. I think that's a good idea. Good content as well, right? Well, we're not absolutely. doing it for the we content, it. but it's it's good. Like we're going to play golf together from literally six and in the morning and till ten at content. night. And creating and creating content. It's like Dude. from early morning from daybreak and then until like. Oh. Have you seen those I mean, TikTok? Uh, what do you call it? The TikTok trend that's going around. Hi, my name is Claire, and this is me. This is me after one drink. And it's like, hi, drink. my name is Claire. And this is me after ten drinks. Dude, exactly. we're gonna look we need rough. To do one. We need to do one for like the golf club. It's like, hey, this is Theo. Uh, this is me on my first shot. And then like plus 555 <laughs> over par later. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm there like trying to put like a, a, a one like, foot put and a miss. <laughs> Cause I'm so tired. Like, Hi, my name is Theo. This has been my. <laughs> Honestly, dude, we should do this. I, I like, we should, we should definitely I'm do down, this. I'm down. We, we could do it in more park, you know. Are you like a full member now? Oh, no, you're not. not yet. I'm having I'm having my last playing interview this Sunday. Okay. Well, good good luck with that. I wish you all the best. Let me know how it goes. And yes. And and this Saturday I'm playing at Tyrrell Hatton's home club. Which one's that? I'm sure I've heard of it. Harleyford. Oh no way. Yeah. Amazing. Enjoy, dude. Are you playing That's with Jin? No, 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 no. He's still he's back in Singapore. I mean, it's funny because the the members club that I'm with, like in in central London, has like a reciprocal arrangement with this golf club right which is uh well it's actually quite far away it's like 36 miles from from central london okay um but to be fair once you're outside the m25 it's just like anyway it just adds another 10 minutes to the hour that you've that we've taken to get out of the city so um yeah so some a weekend of golf uh apparently shit weather but we shall see you'll be all right you'll be fine and right. then, but you know officially season started you know can't wait to play golf with you oh, as much as we can mate, we haven't know, played this, this year summer. have we no we haven't yet it's have april we, so we haven't we played golf together that's mad mate, it needs to happen right yeah 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 yeah. yeah. We, need, we need to sort it i i genuinely think we need to organize this uh this golf day thing 72 holes in a day let's let's, let's do it um yeah that'd be good right guys thank you very much Great. for listening thank you very much thank for subscribing you. and uh like this and has been uh the rasa slice golf show podcast we will see you again. Hope you, hope you learned something new today. Hope you learned right. something new today with the artisan, what do you call it, uh, <laughs> memberships <laughs> and the short game, I don't know, and Daniel Greaves. Go, go follow. Oh, by well, the way, well, yeah, Rick Shields is going in, in like a couple of weeks to film a video with, with Dan Greaves nice. because his, his short good. game is terrible. And I was thinking like, why, why didn't he just go? But yeah, he's, he told us yesterday. He's, 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 he's always said his like, you know, sort of, yeah, 20 yard, you know, he's putting um, on on on. He's like putting. He's like, putting. It's Texas his wedge. This is nemesis. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, Texas. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Anyway, Absolutely. thank you guys for listening. Great. We'll see you again in the next episode. Take care. Bye. Bye.